Animator scripting the missing piece. Let's start by Jmeter, an open source tool. It's for free, based on Java. It's one of the most popular tools for performance management. You have a lot of documents you can access to. It's a very flexible tool that supports protocols. And it's very extensible. You can install plugins. You can have your own. And as it is based on Java, it has the advantage that it has the Java ecosystem support. Some of the other advantages are that the ecosystem has a lot of tools, a lot of companies that build um, J tool, J meter tools. It is based in GUI that makes it possible for people that are just beginning in this world to start um, with their scripts without even knowing how to code or coding languages. But even though it's a very popular tool, it has some disadvantages when working with it. This interface that allows to create test plans makes the test plans or the scripts to be slow as compared to other alternatives when creating the script. And the test plan visibility may not be as easy because our test plan may be a tree and we need to go over the tree to discover all the settings and we have different, different notes, different screens to see what we have been changing. But another disadvantage may be when working as a team, when working with GIT, the test plans are filed in different parts and it's hard to interpret what is being set only by looking at the XML. When we want to see what has changed, we need to know what properties are being used to understand what has been changing. So when working as a team, this may be kind of uncomfortable. We don't have uh, documentation in the same tool. We need, may need to access a different website and look around the internet. So that may make it hard to discover the functionalities. And it does not have any feature to allow us to see if, for example, a test plan had a determined uh, test plan response time. So maybe you can do it on by means of a plugin, but it may not be as effective. Obtain the file, some things, but the others have the other things. So you may need to be changing tools. So all these tools are great, but it would be great to combine both, uh, both approaches to have all the functionalities of JMeter, but have the functionalities of these other tools. Uh, we developed JMeter SDL, which is a Java library. We'll be starting a demo now. You will learn about the functionalities, the benefits, and you may leave, may go home with homework today. So let's start with the demo.
let's add a new project, a new test plan. This is not what we uh, used to recommend. We recommend teams to include their performance scripts in the same place where you have the code, in the same repository or as close to the production code as possible. This makes it easier to continuously test the app. In this case, I don't have the production code, so I'll make a new test plan. This is a code repository, which is open source. I'll go to sample project. This is another repository that has a very simple project as an example, which shows the dependencies and uh, copies the dependencies that I need. First, we'll create the project. You may use what you wish. So I'll name the project. I copied the dependencies. Most of them are the ones that you use in any other project when you run any test. Specifically in this test, I'll use JUnit. I'll use SRJ. I'll zoom. Yeah, that's better. I like SRJ, but you may use whatever you like. The only dependency that we'll be including is the JMeter DTL library. With this dependency, you won't need JMeter or set anything else. With this, you will be able to do and execute your performance script. When you execute, you automatically had an embedded JMeter. I'll name Inami test. Now we're going to create a test plan, which is the basic concept in JMeter. The system is saying that something is missing. Now, the dependency is included, as you can see. This class is the one that is included in all the methods that you may use. With this way, you don't have to import everything at that same time. Now I'm going to create a thread group to define the load profile, the amount of virtual users, as you may have listened in the other sessions, how many threads I'm going to use in the tests, and for how many uh, the duration of the test. We need to include the steps of the thread. We're going to create a thread group. So this is the first advantage of using uh, SDL as compared to JMeter only. We see that this is very fast to find things, whatever I wish to include, and also to find related things. We already have the help we need to make the scripting faster. This is how we start 
the test plan from scratch to begin our test. If I choose Uh, I have the options that I may wish to use. So this makes the process faster to find the elements. Another advantage is that I also have the required attributes. Because we may have in another alternative, we may have a lot of fields and we may not know which one to choose. So in this case, this is Fast, uh, this is faster and is uh, one of the best practices. This is, for example, just a gaming app. If I wanted to post, I have the options now. You have the possible settings with the sampler. We are now writing the body and the content type. This is one of the typical issues in JMeister. I, I want to use the post. I send it. And it may start failing because you may have forgotten to include the type, the content type. So this is one of the best practices to avoid common mistakes that JMeter has. Um, so what DCL does is to make it easier for JMeter users. Uh, I still have red, so I still have something missing. This is These are the things that I can do with the test plan. I start running. You may use mailing if you wish. This is a JUnit test, which is integrated with the tools supported by JUnit. You may use the continuous integration server that you wish to use and to have the reports that the servers provide. So we can see that our request is run. We may add something to see the requests and the responses. We may add a visualizer. to identify or review um, what if what we're doing is what we want to do in, in fact, if this is my expected uh, results. We can see a new window here, the request body, the headers, the header response. When you're testing the test plan, this is what you see. So after you finish, you may raise it. If you run this in a continuous iteration, you uh, remove it. This may be very intuitive and some which may not be the case in JMeter. So in this area, this may be more natural to remove something that we don't want to have in another environment. So we now know that the test is working. We now want to see how the service is, um, the behavior of the service to identify the thresholds that I wish to set for my test when I, when I want my test to fail or to be successful. So let's add a load. Now we're going to use an additional module, the dashboard. That is not something that is used all the time. It's a separate dependency. So dashboard it is. Dashboard visualizer. I now have the import. Now I run it. This is a custom component that JMeter does not have. 
that allows us to see as we are running a test without um, without having to depend on an external dependency to see the results of the service in real time and have an idea of the performance of a service as a test is running. This is a GUI. It's not, um, it's, it doesn't make any sense to use it in continuous integration. Maybe we can use another alternative, but we do have another alternatives that may uh, allow us to save these reports, maybe by using Grafana. I have a screenshot that I can screenshot that I can show. This documentation shows an introduction to Jamie Tordisiel and our concepts, including best practices and maybe some warnings of some uses of some components. What we uh, try to introduce uh, a step-by-step -step use of Jamie Tordisiel. The elements may have, uh, may be included in the user guide, but this may not be necessary because if you push Control J, you can see uh, the information and descriptions of the functions. So this avoids uh, for us to have to go to visit another website while we are scripting. So it's easier to understand what I am using. Now I'm going to show you uh, Grafana. This report is uh, made with Grafana in the user vault. Uh, we have an example. You have to run this, run the test, and you'll have the statistics in real time of how the test is going. And you may check the, the, browser, the browser history. And with the history, uh, you may uh, make comparisons and reviews. We were talking about statistics. We can visualize response times, transaction numbers, thread amounts, and the average, which is half a second. I'm not going to use that, but you may do in your test is to make it fail or to make it su successful based on a specific condition for that. I'm going to save this test plan. We have variables and results. And with this statistics, we can do assertions. You can use stats. We have different statistics. We can, may use overall, that which means global statistics or label, if you wish to see specific statistics. For example, I can now see the sample time to when well, that is used when we wish to uh, evaluate and assess the performance of an app. Now I'm going to check if the response time is below five seconds. So I need to find direct duration seconds. Sorry that I'm uh, speaking <laughs> in Spanish as I talk, in English as I talk. If the uh, percentile 99 of the response time is over five seconds after the test, this test is going to fail and uh, it's going to be failed in J units. In J, yeah. This is a performance test 
that may uh, run in a continuous integration server. I may include an acceptance criteria. I may have another criteria based on errors. So um, this coding may be scary for some people at first, but um, you have some functions that make it friendly. If you're not very familiar with coding, you may also have documentation available. Another functional functionality is, this is, for example, the last step when obtaining testing performance. Uh, you may see load that is limited to the running hardware. For example, you may generate the load that the hardware may generate and the what the server can handle. So we may want to use a machine cluster to generate enough load to uh, generate the, the load that I want to. So for that reason, we included three engines, one, four engines. One is the one that I'm using, the embedded engine, which allows you to run it, to run it right here. So another engine may be used remotely. You may use run in and choose the engine that I want to use. For example, distributed JMeter engine that you want, you, choose, you can uh, define the hosts and you can use the JMeter functionality of working remotely in different engines. And the benefits uh, are that you can uh, define the functions yourselves, but which can be complicated at the same time. Another approach, another one of these engines um, that is uh, a paid uh, functionality, which uh, is worth it. So don't be scary. Don't be scared. <laughs> if you add this dependency, for example, like I'm doing here, I'm going to obtain the token, the authentication token that I need. And with that, you have the running test in a machine cluster of machines that you may set yourselves. You may be able to set different aspects of the executions in JMeter itself. It's very easy to escalate. So this is a very good uh, performance test, which can be very useful. The last functionality, that I want to mention is, for example, I have JMX files. How I'm going, how should I start using JMeter SDL? We have JMX DSL and you use it as an input and you'll be able to have a DCL code. This is not only, be, not only useful to migrate or to start understanding the program, but it's also useful in the sense that you can benefit from the ecosystem that you have already tried. For example, you can record uh, with an extension of the recorder. You generate the GMX, generate DSL, and start working with the DSL. Another uh, benefit uh, may be that it's very um, easy to uh, do the test in modules. If I leave, if I want to test to leave the test in a certain place, I can use a specific uh, method, my sampler, for example. I have the option to replace it, and 
this is structured in a method. If I want to use a parameter, I can use this as a variable. Here I can uh, add users, for example. So it's easier to um, modularize and use the mod certain modules or parameters and navigate through my test plan. I have four minutes left. So I'm going to make a small summary of the benefits of the tool. It has all the JMeter benefits of the Java um, code and some additional benefits, some uh, like the features that I had uh, mentioned recently. Please uh, uh, go to the user guide. You have a channel here. We want to make uh, this um, to, uh, to make a shared tool. Um, so if you have any questions, please do ask. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Don't be shy. My question was if it can be used uh, the library without JMeter. I didn't understand that part very well. I mentioned it at the beginning. You don't need to have uh, JMeter installed. Our program have has all the JMeter dependencies, and when it's running, it's uh, running JMeter locally. that is connected to the other JMeters and executes the tests and collects all the information and centralizes it in the same place. You don't need to install JMeter. My question is, what uh, JMeter versions are supported? Is it all of them? JMeter includes the last version. JMeter DCL includes the um, JMeter last version, latest version. Some users asked about this. Uh, because they wanted to migrate to the last version because they didn't have it already. But we tried to use the latest version of JMeter. Um, if you have any uh, doubts about it, you may create an issue at the repository. This is because uh, sometimes JMeter only runs in version number four. So that was... Uh, why I was asking you about this. You may have some issues with the conversion of GMX to DSL. We are continuously trying to improve this all the time. So if you see with any specific version of JMeter that it's not supported, or if the conversion is not successful, just uh, raise an issue in the repository in DSL, and that will be helping us to help you. Any other questions? I think your work is great. This is classic constructor. My question is, what about plugins? You have a lot of scripts when you, that you can use plugins. How are you working with this? This is a good question. Um, 
when I showed the thread groups. Um, um, just to make it short, some of the JMeter plugin plugins are included in DSL, SDL, sorry. We created a module. Uh, as people ask for different functionalities, for example, a new plugin, we add a layer and add an app in the library that allows you to use the plugin easily. If you see that uh, there it's mainframe mainframe missing, you may create an issue uh, at the repository to help us. Thank you. Yeah.